All right. So, hi, Kaylee. Thank you for um, talking with me once again. For anyone who's watching, this is actually our second attempt at doing this. Um, and we are doing this again because we had some technical difficulties the first time, but this interview is going to be just as good as the first one. It'll probably be even better now. Probably. Yeah. yeah. We're practiced up. Yeah. <laughs> so my first question for you today is, how did you get started with writing? Um, I've always been somebody who writes things. I love keeping journals, um, but I've never intended to write uh, for other people to read for an audience, um, or I didn't intend that initially. Um, when I was writing as a youth, and then I began blogging in 2000 and maybe 10, I think. Um, and I kind of began a blog in a response to having had an abortion and feeling like there was a huge lack of information out there about it and wanting to have a space on the internet where you can go and find out about what will happen without having to find all that weird pro-life misinformation. So I started blogging because of that and then, um, and just wanting to also write about disability in a public forum and my experience with disability. And that kind of led to this book deal in a really organic and totally unpredicted way. Um, so I came to it all not from a straight line or not with full intentions. Yeah. That seems appropriate. Yeah. <laughs> um, so leading that leads into the next question. This is working mm -hmm. out just great, just like last Perfect. Night. Um, so unlike a lot of writers, you had a publisher approach you for a book rather than mm -hmm. you pitching the book to them. What was that like for you? Oh, my. Um, I, I've loved my experience of working with Robbie McGregor and Megan Files and Nick Beauchard, although he's been on vacation, and Veronica Simmons, who all work with um, Invisible Publishing, which is my publishing house. They're amazing, and they're so helpful, and it was so kind of them to commission me to write a book and, like, generous and exciting and awesome. Um, but the act of being commissioned to write a book is also just, like, it's so it's so awful. <laughs> and I don't mean to complain. I recognize it's a huge privilege to be given the opportunity to write a book. I'm like so wildly lucky. But it's I didn't I didn't know what I was going into. I had no idea how hard it is and how lonely it is and how um how it's an activity that can really riddle you in self doubt in a way that I don't often experience. I'm like usually fairly okay with who I am, but writing a book made me doubt all of my securities. <laughs> um, so it was, yeah, it was like, I'm lucky and it was awesome, but it was not, writing this book was not an easy thing. Yeah. Okay. Why was it important to you to self-identify as disabled in such an upfront way from the very beginning of the book? Um, a couple of reasons. If you meet me in person and see me moving, you'll immediately know I'm disabled. And um, subsequently, it's a huge part of my identity and how people respond to me in public. Um, and I wouldn't, and I and I appreciate that part of my identity. It's like a huge part of my identity, and I'm really proud of it. And I and I want everybody to know. And so it would feel weird to write a book and not be really upfront about that being a primary part of who I am, for one. And then for two, I really. There's some amazing disability activists doing incredible work out there, um, and I wouldn't necessarily compare myself to them because we're all different, but I hope that we're all adding voices to um, like a wall of sound that will make people more aware of disability, and I wanted to be a part of that movement. Um, I think that the disability, like disability justice needs to be talked about all the time, and I wanted to do that in a way that felt good for me. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, how do you think that your queer identity and your disabled identity impact what you write about and inform what you write about? Oh, I feel like I answered this really well last time and I can't remember <laughs> what I said. <laughs> um, yeah, I've written like, I've written so much about being queer and disabled uh, and like t I talk about it a lot. I feel like people are probably sick of me talking about it. <laughs> but those, for me, those two identities really, really like um, intersect and overlap and inform one another in a really obvious way for myself. Um, because I have always been disabled, I was never going to fit into the mold that so many of my like straight Catholic peers were falling into. Um, my life was never going to make that kind of like narrow heteronormative sense. Um, and it only makes sense for me that as I have veered off all of the other normative paths, I've also veered off that of my sexual identity. Um, I also really love the word queer because I think it allows for difference in a way that isn't just about like who you're fucking mm. or who you're having sex with. Sorry, if you need to. <laughs> I don't know if we need to get that or not. I'll find out. <laughs> okay, cool. 
<laughs> How did we not ever say that word in the last time? I don't know. We really didn't. <laughs> we didn't. We just stayed it right away. It's it. in all of my writing. <laughs> yeah, totally. I think it's probably fine. Okay, great. Um, yeah, I like queer for that reason. I feel like it's like when I say that I'm queer, I'm celebrating all of my differences and not just my orientation or like who I am having sex with. I'm also celebrating the way that my feet move and the way that my knees are scraped. And um, I love I love the word queer for that reason. Queer is also used sometimes as a verb, right? Mm-hmm. Like to queer something. To queer something. Yeah. Which is kind of interesting. I know I like as that. As an aside, but I, I think that sort of makes sense in the context of what you're saying. Yeah, it definitely does. Yeah, I love it. It's such a great word. Um, so building a little bit on that last question, how have your identities impacted your experience as a writer? And wondering whether you encountered any barriers yourself based on your identities, and if you think that disabled writers and queer writers face barriers in getting published and writing. Mm. Um, I think that, like, without a doubt, hands down, disabled and queer writers face a lot of barriers all of the time in all acts of life. Uh, and I would be shocked if publishing somehow it was this, like, safe zone where everything was rainbows and puppies. Like, I can't imagine that's how it works. Um, no. <laughs> uh, for me, it was a really positive experience because Invisible is super small. And so I was able to talk to the people who are publishing my book directly, and they were able to, like, reassure me and talk to me and figure out exactly what I wanted. Um, and I was working with people who, you know, were, are feminists and like have an analysis around disability. Um, so it wasn't like I had to explain everything to them all the time, but I imagine if I was working with people who weren't already radical in some ways, I would do, I would have to do so much initial priming about where my politics lie because there's, it's like the way that I speak is so informed by my like lefty leanings. And I hope that, uh, generally the way that I speak allows people who aren't as in the same political vein as me to understand what I'm saying. But it's really nice to be able to write a book and to be unapologetically who I am. Mm -hmm. It was, it was a great experience. Um, but that I think it, it's, I don't think many experiences are like that. And I think that I really lucked out and I can't imagine, uh, trying to do this with somebody who wasn't already radical. Mm -hmm. It would be hard, really, really hard. Yeah. Yeah. So, in so invisible sort of size and like lack of mainstreamness was an advantage in this case? For me, definitely. Yeah. Like, even, I think I said this before, but I was interviewed in a, in a publication here and the interview was awesome and the journalist was so great. And I, at that time, was writing brackets around the dis and disability. Mm -hmm. I was trying to figure out how I liked that word to be represented. Uh, and the woman who was writing the article about me really wanted to respect my choices and use the type that I was using. Um, but it was definitely a debate that we had to have because it wasn't grammatically correct. Um, and I'm sure that folks who use the pronoun they do that debate all of the time, you know? Yeah. And uh, it's, it's like tiring when you can't choose your own words for the sake of some like old systemic belief that is like really being eroded quite quick, quickly anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Um, final question. Mm -hmm. What is the most important thing that you're hoping to achieve with this book? Ah, uh, my response remains the same. I hope that people don't hate my book. <laughs> 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 yeah, I'm still so nervous. Um, I hope that people like it and I hope that people read it. And I'm also sure that not everybody will like it mm -hmm. and that's okay. Um, so that's like my base hope and then in a grander scheme, I guess I hope that folks who don't already think about disability justice or maybe who haven't encountered like sex positive, queer, disabled feminists before will find my book and will be like, whoa, and their eyes can be open to other awesome, radical folks doing the same kind of stuff. Um, yeah, I, I really like my book. I also feel like it is um, a primer in a lot of ways. Like I'm not a radical queer theorist or a radical disabled theorist. Like I'm not. I don't think that I'm writing anything that is like um, intensely academic, maybe. Um, it's just like, I think it's like a relatively easy read and I hope that it will like steer people in towards more incredible disabled writers too, like Eli Clare and um, Leah Pakshmi and all of the other incredible queer folks who are doing writing around disability justice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. great. Yeah. Have you? It's it's been a week since we last talked. Have you started to get feedback on the book? Have you I have. Talked to you about it? 
Yeah, I have gotten a bit of feedback. Uh, because I have a lot of friends here, a lot of my friends are reading it. And that's nice and also a little bit uncomfortable. <laughs> Mostly it's quite nice. Um, they're, re- they're reading about your sex life. Yeah, and I mean, I would tell them anyway. Right. Um, <laughs> but it's, yeah, it's it's also a bit funny to, to make a piece of art and then ask your friends to purchase it. Like, I want, I just want to give it to you, but I don't, I can't. I don't have that many copies. Right. Um, <laughs> uh, so they people have generally been telling me they like it. A woman who works for the paper here was like, yeah, I loved it. So that was great because okay. she's not my close friend. She didn't have to be nice to me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I, yeah, I think that. Since the week that we've, since it's been a week since we spoke, and I feel like in that time I've gotten a little bit more sure of myself. I hope it's just like a continuing upward trajectory. You're going to be unbelievably sure of yourself as you take over the world in the coming months. (laughs) Great.